Kashmiri Mutton Yakni. My mom's favorite, my grandmom's favorite. Took me a while to learn this one, but hey, with a bit of technique, you can get it right too. And to make it, this is what you've got to do. Yakni is a dish that my grandmother, my daddy, dad's mom, always made for me. And uh, it took me a while to get this dish right because it is a bit technical. The versions of Yakni trace back to Central Asia. Uh, I do remember talking to one of my Armenian friends and they have a dish which is very similar to what we make. A lot of North Indian cultures also have Yakni, uh, the Lucknowi Nizam cuisine. But what differentiates Kashmiri Yakni, particularly Kashmiri Pandit's Yakni, to that made by others is that we don't use any uh, onions, garlics or tomatoes. I've got some lamb here, this is the shoulder. And what I'm gonna do to begin Yakni is to first make the stock and cook the lamb. Uh, you need to have reasonably fatty pieces for it. And yeah, just put them into a pot and just load it up with enough water to cover the lamp. I'm gonna get the heat going. You wanna boil the lamp? I'm not gonna add any seasoning at this point of time. We're gonna boil it and just skim off some of that, those impurities that come out and then we're gonna build flavor one after the other. This is now started to simmer. And you can see all the impurities from the meat are floating on top. That's not the stuff that we want to eat. So I'm going to get this off into a bowl. This is a relatively easy dish to learn, but it will take you a few takes to get it consistent. It's the mastery that we're talking about. You need to get as much of this come out as possible. It'll keep your sock nice and clean. And yeah, you won't get that bad mouthfeel. So that to me is plenty. Now's the time to season. Uh, of course, not totally, just half of what you would need. And I'm gonna put a whole bunch of whole spices in here. Bay leaves, some cardamom, cinnamon, the difference between a regular yakini and an elevated version is using a really good garam masala. And traditional Kashmiri garam masala does not have any red chilies in it or any coriander. I'm gonna use my Spice Angel garam masala in this. In Kashmiri, we call it Dravil masala, which means fine spice. Uh, and yeah, this one has about 12 secret ingredients in it. No chilies and no coriander, and that is a key to making Kashmiri yakni. I wish you could smell this experience over here. It is really, really epic. Now, I'm gonna let this cook on a really low heat for about hour, hour and a half. This is meat on bone, so it does take a little longer to cook. You could use a pressure cooker and cut the time in half. I'm a bit of an old school, my cast iron pot, it's gonna be there simmer for about an hour and a half, maybe two, and then we get ready to make the yakni sauce. The lamb has been slow cooking for about a couple of hours and it's nice. I've cut the heat uh, and you just want it to be in that beautiful broth. Oh, that's looking yum. Now we're gonna use this stock and the yogurt to make the yakni sauce. Um, very simple, you take about a couple of cups, one and a half cup of yogurt, we're gonna season it a bit. Seasoning and stages is super critical. You don't wanna over season your dish. Always add your salt in stages, tastes epic. In goes the Kashmiri garam masala, the Spice Angel garam masala. Again, it's critical that your garam masala does not have chilies or coriander in it. Those are not the flavors that are traditionally used in Kashmir. I'm also gonna add some dry ginger and some fennel powder. We call it soft and salt. And just a tiny bit of hing. 
This is compounded stuff, asafoetida. So you can put about one fourth of a teaspoon. Then we just give it a quick whisk. And from here on, the intent is to bring the temperature of the yogurt up. It's always better to keep the yogurt outside so that it comes to the room temperature. And it's almost like making an anglaise or, or custard. We're gonna use the stock to help bring up the temperature of the sauce, of the acne sauce. And then we're gonna cook it all together as one whole dish. I'm gonna take some of this still hot sauce and pour it slowly into my yogurt. And what it does is it'll prevent the sauce from splitting. It'll bring it up to temperature. So when you're cooking it on slightly high flame, the yogurt will just split a little bit, but not much. Traditionally, some people would also use rice flour at this point of time. Um, but for a meat dish, I think that's, that's a cheat's way out. We can do it for the vegetarian version of a yakni. The collagen in the meat is what's gonna give body to this whole dish. I'll add some more stock. I'll keep doing it till my sauce feels warm to touch. The sauce, oh, it smells terrific. Childhood memories. It's ready. Now what you wanna do is it's already feeling a bit warm and that's from the stock that we've been slowly pouring in. This, as I said, helps preventing splitting the yogurt. Now we're gonna turn the heat back on, onto our pot. We'll just add this yogurt back into the pot. It might seem a little saucy at the moment and this is where you're gonna be cooking it into that pot and reduce that sauce to a slightly thicker consistency. So let's just wait for it to boil. Some people may not find it very traditional, but this is one of the ways that you can prevent the yogurt from splitting by tempering it with mustard oil right at the end. I've got some cumin and some mustard oil going in there and that mustard oil is gonna bring in another depth of flavor. And that is how you make Kashmiri sin yakni or meat yakni, in this case, lamb yakni.